In today's video lesson, I'm going to share some things that I've been doing with chord inversions that's really enhanced the way that I hear everything. Now, I really brought this over from my piano playing, because in piano I was working on voicings and all chord inversions. And I picked up the saxophone one day and I started hearing those inversions on the sax and it was really cool. And it really sharpened up my ear. So I'm going to show you how I did it. And I'm going to show you the typical way that people work on inversions of chords and how different this system is. Okay, typical way would be this. I'm going to play my C major 7, root position. Okay, that's one, three, five, seven. Now I'm going to start in the third. I'm going to go... That's called first inversion. Okay, now I'm going to start on the fifth. That's called second inversion. Okay, and now I'm going to start on the seventh. That's called third inversion with the seventh on the bottom. So listen to these if I play them one after the other. It sounds pretty. There's nothing wrong with it. And actually, it's not a bad idea to even play them that way if you're at a more basic level of your understanding of chords. Nothing wrong with that, okay? If you're more advanced, however, this way I'm going to show you is going to really do the trick for your ears hearing in detail. The problem I have with this it basically just sounds like the same thing which it is. It's just starting in a different place. You don't truly get the difference in the flavor of the intervals because the overriding sound of the chord is so strong. Here's how you get that true flavor of the new interval formation when you do the inversions. I'm going to do what I call C margin. I call it, I call it, you know how you can have like a left justified, if you're typing on a word processor, left justified text or right justified text? Okay, I'm thinking of it as bottom justified note or a top justified note. So this is a bottom justified C. So I'm going to say C is the bottom note of all these structures. C is the root. And these are major seven chords. Now, I'm going to hit that C again, but C is the third. And it's going to be a major seven chord. So it has to be an A flat major seven. And I'm going to go up. So I'm going three, five, seven, one. Don't you hear more contrast when I, that versus the old way I was doing it? Because it's a different key. I mean, we're in a whole different key center now. But it's the same structure. The intervals are the same. I'm going from the third to the fifth to the seventh to the root. The thing that's going to make it work and really pop for the ear is that I've I'm doing that bottom note as C, that, that margin, that bottom margin of the C. Whose teaching methods have been endorsed by Michael Brecker, Stan Getz, Phil Woods, James Moody, and Jamie Abersall? He studied with Joe Henderson and James Moody. He has sold more than 100,000 saxophone books worldwide. James Moody says every lesson in his books is a must for all musicians. His unique teaching method has been transformed into an online video lesson course with hundreds of easy to follow video lessons. Subscribe to Greg Fishman's video lesson series at gregfishmanjazzstudios.com and play like you never thought you could. Let's go on. C is the fifth. What's the chord going to be? It's going to be F major. Okay, so that's the next one. And now C is going to be the seventh. What's the chord? It's going to be D flat major. So here they are in order. C is the root. C is the third. C is the fifth. C is the seventh. 